Hello everyone, this is your host Professor Reha here with the Mage Hunter. We've already covered the Dervish earlier upon request and the Druid upon request. So here we are with the Mage Hunter. Now, the Mage Hunter is the combination of the Arcanist and the Inquisitor. And this is intended as a broad overview of the class for improv purposes, for those who don't have any items for this particular combination, or for those who are looking to kind of construct their own builds based on maybe some of the ideas here, or to come up with their own builds using at least some of the knowledge gained here. With that being said, there is a word of caution I would like to put out about this class. It is very heavily focused on elemental damage, although it can splash in piercing and aether damage as secondary damage types. Keep in mind that this is an elemental heavy class just by nature, and that elemental damage usually is resisted about a third of its damage by most enemies in the game, so do be aware of the fact that while a lot of the damage here is going to sound absolutely huge, a lot of the time you're going to have a bit of a problem actually attaining those damage numbers just because of enemies inherent resistances to one or the other of your elements to some extent. And even if they have only a little resistance to two elements and have a major but not 100% resistance to another element, when you add them all up together it'll roughly be a third of your damage that's being resisted here. So do keep that in mind with the Mage Hunter. That being said, it is very easy to mix and match skills here. So again, just like with the previous video, I am not really going to be talking about specific builds per se, but more of general ideas here. And there are actually roughly three broad ways you can approach the Mage Hunter. Now I'm going to go in sequence from the Arcanist to the Inquisitor, but the first one is a fire-heavy, reckless power-focused idea. Now whether or not you decide to focus on autos or skills is entirely up to you. I personally prefer dual wielding, but offhands are also very nice. Essentially though, when you're running Reckless Power, what you're really talking about here is primarily, I usually go melee with this because I can use Kalidor's Tempest much more effectively. I can open with some beams. This is actually one of the few times I will use, I will almost go out of my way to use an offhand so I can use Albrecht's Aether Ray. Whether or not I go into Devastation is another question entirely. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends on how much support I have for that, but I usually do run Albrecht's Aether Ray, Kalidor's Tempest with Wrath of Agravix, and then what I will additionally do is run usually Rune of Kalistor as well. Uh, Inquisitor Seal is great here. This is fairly fantastic. And I'll usually at the very least run Word of Renewal and Vigor. Whether or not I go into Steel Resolve depends upon, again, my equipment. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. More often than not, I won't actually run Steel Resolve when I'm using Reckless Power, simply because I don't really have necessarily a need for all of that, necessarily. Yes, it does increase your physical and elemental damage, but with the Reckless Power, I'm not looking to have physical damage as my secondary damage type. I'm looking to have Aether damage as my backup damage type. Now, keep in mind, though, that this still makes it very difficult to overcome Ethereals, so the physical damage can be nice. But, quite frankly, difficulties with Ethereals are, is pretty inescapable with the Mage Hunter in the first place. You are just going to have a rough time with the Ethereals, at least until you get the right equipment for this that'll reduce elemental or aether resistance because the ethereals broadly speaking do very well against elemental resist uh, elemental damage and they do very well against ethereal damage just by nature of their faction now if you f don't want to use an offhand and you still want a great ranged option then i would actually for once suggest panetti's replicating missile you see, what you can essentially do, if you really want to, is spam this into next week, and then just use Kelidor's Tempest whenever the enemy gets close enough to you, knock them back with Wrath of Agravix, just keep on slapping. You could also build Electra's Flash Freeze if you really want that fire resistance decrease. I don't often build it in this scenario, but you can. 
So keep that in mind that that is an option you have, is to run Alexis Flash Freeze as well, but this is- I almost always build Calidrus Tempest, usually because I'm melee with this, with Reckless Power. You know, you set up a nice Inquisitor Seal that's increasing your damage output, you throw down some nice runes, especially on bosses, this is quite nice, and you can absolutely devastate a large quantity of enemies. And it's just a magical time. Now, that being said, there's also the alternative of the Star Pact, which, obviously, Alexis Flash Freeze is always on the table. Again, though, with this particular combination with the Mage Hunter, I don't necessarily immediately go for Alexis Flash Freeze with Star Pact. I will usually go for Trozan Sky Shard of the Frozen Core. I'll actually usually go into Shattered Star under Mage Hunter because I've actually got some decent support for lightning damage here. This isn't necessarily something I'll always build. But with this particular scenario, again, you've got good old Rune of Hagarad, which is great, but if I'm going to go Star Pact, I'm honestly often going into dual wielding and trying to utilize Chilling Rounds, Storm Spread, and Iskander's Elemental Exchange because this enhances two out of your three damage types. So at that particular point, doubling down and really enhancing elemental damage can go a decent ways for you. Again, it can be a little bit tough. You are relying heavily on piercing damage to punch through and get rid of ethereals. Sometimes I'll splash in Horn of Gandar just for that specific reason, but that depends entirely on what equipment I have at the time. You do have Storm Spread doing piercing damage as well, so that's nice. Chilling Rounds does piercing damage, which is also being enhanced. So you do have some alternatives, but this is actually specifically why I usually run dual wielding pistols when I'm using Star Pact. Unlike Reckless Power, which has a built-in ethereal damage as a secondary damage type, which still has a problem against ethereals, in all honesty, Star Pact doesn't have that. It is entirely enhancing cold and lightning damage, which are both elemental damage types, which is something of a problem, and it's converting a certain amount of physical damage to cold damage, which normally you want, but in this rare circumstance is actually a negative. So in this particular circumstance, focusing on the pierce damage, or at least enhancing a certain amount of the pierce damage, will really save your life a lot of the time. And fortunately, Chilling Rounds and Storm Spread are both doing piercing damage. This also does piercing damage, so you're enhancing Cold, Lightning, and Pierce almost equally. Star Pack does push the Cold and Lightning a little bit over the edge, but ultimately, that is going to be one of the better ways to approach Star Pack specifically. So where Reckless Power, I might emphasize a little bit more melee to the point where even sometimes if you're feeling really spicy, instead of Albrecht's Aether Ray, maybe you go into Flames of Ignifar. Totally up to you. I don't often because I just personally prefer Aether Ray in a Reckless Power situation, but you can. You can go into Flames of Ignifar instead, but for the Star Pact, I do recommend going ranged so you can build up this Pierce damage, which isn't going to be converted, which is very important, and running Pierce as your secondary damage type, which is one of the few builds that I'm going to be talking about in this video that'll really actually do decent damage to Ethereals. You're going to have far less problems with ethereal, the Ethereal faction under this, because even as your elemental damage is being somewhat resisted, your piercing damage is not, at least not heavily, so that is a much better alternative there to Reckless Power, and it is one of my preferred ways, not my absolute preferred way, but it is one of my preferred ways to approach the Mage Hunter. This is, I think, a little more effective, in my opinion, than the Reckless Power type focused builds, because, again, this does have the piercing damage that can really help. However, that is by no means the only approach you can run here. There is, of course, the exclusives of the famed and the feared Inqu the Inquisitor. Now, I don't often go Aura of Conviction. But if I am going to run Aura of Conviction, I am usually going to go full autos, full autos, with both the runes and artifact handling. Why, you ask? Excellent question. Each of these does a damage other than elemental damage, right? You have piercing and cold here, and here you have physical and fire. 
This is enhancing piercing and physical. Now, the combination doesn't do any internal trauma damage, so we're just going to pretend that doesn't exist. It's fine. And then with artifact handling, you enhance all of this damage as well, unlike every other type of skill in here. This does fire, cold, lightning later on. This does elemental, which is nice and all. This does just the fire. It does lightning later on. There is no physical or pierce damage here, which is not what Aura of Conviction does. All right? Now, even all of these, physical damage, piercing damage, piercing damage. Now, you may be wondering, well, why are you building Escondras then? This is primarily to bring the elemental damage up to roughly match the piercing and physical damage you're doing with Aura of Conviction. So what this ultimately does is it almost completely equalizes your elemental damage with your pierce damage. This is the most balanced damage output, but the reason why I don't build it that often is because this is usually my go-to when I'm partied with other players. Because, say, for example, you have a friend who wants to play a necromancer, right? Okay, great. That's just fine. They play Necromancer, they use Skeletons. Now they have a backline of Skeletons. The backline of Skeletons consists of primarily two different damage types. The Crossbowmen are usually doing Piercing Damage. There are versions that also do Vitality Damage on top of that, but primarily there is Pierce Damage there. And then you have the Skeleton Mages, which do primarily Fire Damage, which is an element. So, just with the Aura of Conviction, which, by the way, enhances allies, so all skeleton crossbowmen within 12 meters of you, whether or not they're yours, are getting increased piercing and physical damage. If you're feeling particularly spicy, or the your allies' skeletons' frontline just happens to be near you, you're also enhancing the physical portion of the damage of the melee skeletons as well. But on top of that, you'll notice Iskandra's Elemental Exchange also has a 12 meter radius, which is also enhancing allies. This is enhancing the fire damage of the skeleton mages. It is for this reason that I usually will run Aura of Conviction in a party setting. Now, this isn't the only application of this, of course. If any of your allies are doing elemental damage, this will really help them, especially if they're ranged. And then you have the option of having your allies hold down enemies or lock down enemy attention while you spam runes at the enemy. Or, should your allies need to retreat, you can line up a series of runes behind them that they can retreat behind should they need it. There's a whole bunch of cool things you can do in a party setting with the runes and with the auras you provide. And you'll still be doing pretty good amounts of damage as well, especially with artifact handling, which is boosting the overall damage output of your runes by a respectable 12% and decreasing that skill recharge. So, whenever you get into a combat situation, if you're seeing a group of enemies being a problem, spam down a whole bunch of runes for a couple of seconds, start firing away. If you are against a boss, put down a couple of runes underneath them, shoot a bunch of shots through your dual wielding, and then just keep on going. So this is generally my go-to for party situations, but outside of party situations, I don't often run this. By the way, for reference, I forgot to mention, but Horn of Gandar is an excellent emergency response in this build, should enemies get close to you, or if your allies really need it. It's not strictly necessary, but it is extremely effective, especially with allies. Confused enemies are weak enough to target on your own, but when you have allies to take advantage of that confusion, oh boy, you can really slap down an enemy, an, an, an enemy before they can even figure out what the heck is going on. So just keep that in mind, that this is a really excellent response to just, in general, party situations. So if you play with other people, this is an excellent way to approach things, and you'll have basically an answer to everything. Alright, so the enemy's resistant to pierce? Sure, let me hit them with this elemental damage. Ah, we're facing ethereals and they resist elemental damage, broadly speaking? I've got pierce damage, it's fine. And any weakness you have your allies can cover for you because you're enhancing their damage types. Now, this isn't the only approach to this, but it is one of them. All right? So that's generally how I approach Aura of Conviction. Now, the one variety of Mage Hunter that I will usually run as a melee is Aura of Censure. There are a couple of reasons for this. That's right, I forgot this is on. There are a couple of reasons I primarily run Aura of Censure as a melee character.
and that is, in fact, actually Alexa's Flash Freeze. Consider, you freeze all the enemies around you, and Alexa's Flash Freeze is killing 100% fire resistance. Now, that doesn't mean that the enemy is going to have zero fire resistance. There are some enemies that have over 100% fire resistance, so don't get too excited there. But for a lot of the common enemies, this will wipe out 100% of their fire resistance. It's only specific bosses, specific heroes, that have over 100% fire resistance. But for everyone else, there's Alexa's Flash Freeze and MasterCard. But you freeze all of the enemies, and then you have Aura of Conviction doing fire and burn damage to them, and re reducing their elemental resistances even further. At this point, you can additionally run, if you felt like at absolute zero, which is entirely your choice, I don't necessarily go into this a whole lot, because I don't need to, but you can also run Kalidora's Tempest for that fire damage, some nice Aether damage as a splash, Wrath of Agrifix. You're basically going to be untouchable, because anytime anybody comes near you, you can freeze them, you're burning them, and then after the fact, Kalidora's Tempest, and you can also additionally run Inquisitor's Seal. Now, interestingly enough, I don't run Inquisitor's Seal if I'm running... Kalidor's Tempest, because I'm going to blow them away from the seal, and that means nothing. I'm either going to pick one or the other, which one you pick is totally up to you, uh, or your equipment, as it turns out. Uh, I just personally find Kalidor's Tempest happens to me more often than not, but it, one or the other, don't, don't use both, it just generally does not work out well. And... You could also run Flames of Ignifar, which is extremely potent with this idea in mind. With the whole freezing enemies and being in melee range, it's quite fantastic. Now, with these broad build ideas in mind, there are some things I want to talk about that aren't necessarily build-specific. You'll notice I have not talked about Maven's Sphere. That is because I want to talk about skills that are always worth considering in a Mage Hunter build. First off, obviously, Maven's Sphere. Damage absorption is great. Love this thing. Inner Focus. Obviously, Spirit increases elemental damage, and basically, no matter how you build, you're going to be interacting with elemental damage in some capacity. It's basically inescapable, which is fine. Uh, furthermore, I am rather fond of Mental Alacrity as well. This tends to be a very skill-heavy class, but that's totally fine. Other skills that are always worth at least considering is Deadly Aim, especially if you decide to mix Deadly Aim with Arcane Will and Inner Focus. Because you see, actually this is something that I want to point out, Inner Focus increases offensive ability by 12%. Offensive ability is the stat that controls how often you crit. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, Deadly Aim activates whenever you get a critical blow, you are absolutely staking correct. If you can chain crits using inner focus and by the way this is self self-sustaining deadly aim plus 18 percent offensive ability you can keep the party going so that is something that is worth mentioning very specifically is that you have an easier time triggering deadly aim if you run full inner focus but you don't necessarily need to it's just a, a nifty little bonus feature of the combination so you do have that option, so just keep that in mind. Other things that are at least worth mentioning is Stormbox of Elgoloth. If you don't want the lightning damage, maybe you're running Reckless Power, for instance, right? Arcane Net. Convert that lightning damage to Aether damage. Now, notice that the Tether remains electrified. If you're running Reckless Power and you want this, and you want that delicious Aether damage, don't bother with the Tether. It's, you know, nice and everything, but you don't need it. You can just run that, do some pure Aether damage in your build, which sometimes can be nice to have. So just keep that in mind whenever you are running the Reckless Power. And furthermore, finally, if you are a member of a party and you don't want to run Aura of Conviction, that's totally fine. All the rest of your exclusive skills increase elemental damage in some way. Consider Word of Pain all the way up to Death Sentence. Not only will this increase the piercing damage you're doing, which, again, my favorite... Usually when I'm going to run Word of Pain, I'm going to run... I'm usually using it with Star Pact in a party. 
if I am going to run this. You can splash this in any of the builds, really, even the Aura of Conviction, because this is going to decrease Pierce Resistance, which you do actually inflict, so this can even work with Aura of Conviction, but if, even if you're not using Aura of Conviction and you are in a party setting, it's never a bad idea to potentially run Word of Pain. It can be very effective. Now, on top of that, there is a fun little combination, rather specific combination, that you absolutely can run. Namely, you can 100% run a Tainted Power Chaos Vitality build. Now, this generally isn't going to sound terribly sensible at first, but this is going to... I'll, I'll talk about the benefits of this particular build in a minute, but you would run Reckless Power, convert all of this damage to Chaos and Vitality. All right, you're still enhancing the fire damage. You still have that fire damage. You're still boosting that, first off. Second off, Kalidor's Tempest. Third off, Flames of Ignifar. Fourth off, Inquisitor Seal, Arcane Empowerment. Fifth, uh, you have a couple of different options for your fifth. Maybe you don't even necessarily want Kalidor's Tempest. You can, but you can choose not to as well. I usually do, but again, that's not strictly necessary. If I'm not running Kalidor's Tempest, what I am running is Stormbox with Arcane Net, which is actually really nice for different reasons. I'll talk about the strategic advantages of both, and then I'll potentially run Word of Newell up to Vigor. Now, why would you want to run this? Well, primarily because this is going to potentially really balance out your damage types. This is not something that you're necessarily going to see a whole lot of, and you have a couple of different options if you want to take advantage of Reckless Power, but you're doing Elemental Damage, you're doing Chaos Damage, you're doing Vitality Damage, and now you've got a response to Ethereals. Now, what you're essentially doing with this build is you're trading off higher overall damage output for a better response to Ethereals essentially, is what you're doing here. So, across the board, your damage will be a little bit lower, but nothing in particular will individually resist you. Yes, the Chthonics will have a rough time. I mean, I'm sorry, let me rephrase it. You will, you will have a rough time against Chthonics because, oh, Chaos and Vitality damage is something they resist. Chaos and Vitality, this is doing fire. Yes, the Chthonics will generally laugh at your Aether Ray and your... Flames of Ignifar, which you don't normally necessarily want to be building both at the same time anyways, but that's beside the point. But that's why you normally want to go into either Stormbox of Elgoloth or potentially Kalidor's Tempest. Now, the difference between which one of these two you want will depend upon what you're having the most trouble with. Are you having problems with enemy groups and they're killing you? Kalidor's Tempest, Wrath of Agravix, Inferno. Blast them away, do some genuine Aether damage, do some fire damage, do some lightning damage. Great. Are you having problems with individual bosses? Stormbox of Elgoloth, Ar Arcane Net. Slap that on them, do pure Aether damage, life is good. Now, there are two primary disadvantages to this build sketch. Uh, first off, you will notice that Albrecht's Aether Ray and Flames of Ignifar are not exactly... Don't, they don't exactly coordinate well, because they both have to be held down, they're both channel skills, and they both have pretty similar conditions. So, I don't necessarily build both, but it is something you can do, and I just want to talk about both of them simultaneously. So you're not necessarily going to devote yourself to both of these. So let's pretend Albrecht's Aether Ray for a bit. It really depends on whether or not you want to use an offhand. If you're using an offhand, go Albrecht's Aether Ray, it's better overall. But if you're not using an offhand go into Flames of Ignifar. Anyways, back to the primary point. You can, in fact, run Fabric of Reality and then go into the Aether Damage of Kaldros Tempest or into the Aether Damage of Stormbox and do very impressive amounts of damage and also boost the Chaos Damage of either one of these two that you choose. Furthermore, if you really felt spicy, you could go into Word of Pain instead of whichever one of these two you didn't pick up. For example, let's pretend we go into Albrecht's Aether Ray, right? just because I tend to go into Albrecht's Aether Ray just because I'm already going to be at Reckless Power anyways, so it tends to help, but let's let's go with the cheapo version here for a bit. Right? We go into this, we go into this. We're gonna max these. 
gonna pull these points back here so I can get an Inquisitor Seal and I'm gonna get Arcane Empowerment. Now this isn't necessarily your only accurate response either. Something I've also found to be very effective overall instead of Inquisitor Seal is not going Inquisitor Seal at all and instead going into Horn of Gandar and Maven's Sphere or possibly Inner Focus whichever one you prefer. Maybe you really want to go into Deadly Aim. Maybe instead of Stormbox, you want to max uh, Inferno and Calderos Tempest because you'll notice 16 points here, 16 points here, 14 points available. You can do that. You can mix and match this all kinds of different ways. Maybe you don't want Horn of Gandar at all and you don't want Stormbox. You want Calderos Tempest, you want Inferno, and you want Inner Focus as well. Totally fine. Totally fine. Actually, if you decided not to go into Horn of Gandar and you pulled completely back this way, you could, in fact, go for Maven's Sphere. Actually, kill this too really quick. Pull out Stormbox. Go full Kalidors. Wrath of Agravix Inferno. Have points left over for Inner Focus. And maybe you splash in a couple points for Arcane Will as you choose, or maybe you prefer Deadly Aim that is equally as useful. Maybe you want to do a bit of shooting, maybe you put five points into ranged expertise, whatever you want at that point. But you have a bunch of different options at that particular point. Uh, again, you could, instead of going to Albrecht's Aether Ray, you could go really die hard into Flames of Ignifar. Now, if you're going to go really hard into Flames of Ignifar, which, again, is perfectly fine, you're going to want Inquisitor Seal. You're going to want to put down an Inquisitor Seal, and you're going to just burn anything that comes near you. Uh, you will want some kind of response to ranged enemies. I will usually default to Word of Pain. Or Stormbox of Elgaloth is very nice. If I'm using Flames of Ignifar, I will usually run Stormbox. For the Aether Ray, it's, it's a toss-up between Kalidors and Stormbox. It really depends on what I'm equipped with, what, what skills my equipment is enhancing. So for the Aether Ray version... That's kind of it that comes down to whatever I'm currently equipped with But if you're gonna run the flames of Ignifar first off that consumes far more points and even though it's extremely damaging If you decide to devote that many points to it, but you'll definitely want inquisitor seal and you're gonna run Stormbox of El Galoth and specifically target ranged enemies with that Okay, so keep that in mind basically you would be running this with this running this, still running this, and running these. And then from Arcanus, you're pulling out whatever support. You don't even necessarily need Reckless Power under that circumstance, necessarily. I usually do, but you don't have to. You can just go into Fabric of Reality, that's fine. And you just have those options there. So, that would be basically... That's all I'm going to really say about... Um... The Mage Hunter, it's a very interesting class to work on. Keep in mind that the early game of the Mage Hunter tends to be... Well, I won't say the early game, that's not quite accurate. I would say the mid game of the Mage Hunter is quite a, a burden because you are not quite at the point where your damage is balanced out. Usually midway through almost any Mage Hunter build, you're doing so much elemental damage just by the nature of the class that you're probably having a hard time with the ethereals in the mid game and it's not until the later game that you're really going to overcome that and in the early game ethereals don't have high nobody has high enough resistances to really care too much about but in you know that mid game where you're in elite and you're around level 50 you're just starting to get your you're just starting to get legitimately good equipment which you're going to be equipped with for the next 10 15 levels yeah, that's really tough for the Mage Hunters, so if you're going into the Mage Hunter blind, do keep that in mind, and don't give up on it midway through. It's going to be hard, but it's not necessarily anything wrong with your build midway through. It's usually just a matter of you haven't gotten your skills high enough to the point where you're punching through that elemental resistance that Ethereals are known for. This is particularly bad in Malmoth primarily, um... That's really rough for the Mage Hunter on usually your second run through, sometimes your first run. Um, that can be pretty ugly. 
and there are, there are pockets of enemies in the Necropolis that are a bit problematic as well, but beyond those two specific locations, you're generally not going to have an absolutely huge issue, although I will point out Forticon is, is somewhat problematic for Mage Hunters as well for similar reasons, but with that being said, thank you all very much for joining me, and if you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. Thank you all very much for joining me. I have don't remember if I said that, and have a great 24 hours.